Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of I was a teenage exocolonist. I was. I'm like thinking about the was in that because we're going through a famine and everything got destroyed. So like, it's kind of crazy, you know? So yeah, we're going to continue the story. If you do enjoy this episode, remember to like and subscribe and we'll just head in because I don't even know what we're supposed to do. There's nothing to do when we got here. Everything was destroyed. My cat wants in my face. No. Your dad is tending to your mom's garden. Luckily, most of the irreplaceable earth plants were spared during the attack. You don't know what to do. You don't know what he'd do if he lost this part of your mom, too. I know it's hard, but I think... What would your mom do right now? She wouldn't complain, that's for sure. Cash is looking at a hole in the colony wall. What if maybe we deserve this? My dads have been working around the clock to salvage the strato. What have you been doing, Ophelia? With everyone living in here, there's barely enough room to think. Mourn or rebuild? put our character stuff so we can mourn we're gonna rebuild the first month of quiet passage each day plod plodding one after the other you still have trouble sleeping in the classroom barracks but there's nowhere else to go every day you wake with the others and try to make the best of it grief and anger come in waves not just for you but everyone someday are better than the other. You're assigned to help rebuild the walls. The first part of the month is spent just dragging away the wreckage, sorting it into salvage and recycling. By the time that's done, crews disassembling parts of the stratospheric have delivered enough salvage that you can begin working patching up the walls. A sense of urgency per uh, permeates the crew. After everything, people need to feel safe. This is on the working crew with you, something he does begrudgingly. Walls didn't help the first time. We should tear them all down and live like the animals do. If someone planted a bunch of buildings in my land, I'd be pissed off too. I'm just gonna work hard. By the end of the month, you've had noticeable progress. There are priorities and not a lot of construction material, but... When the last year's mushwood harvest is done drying out, you'll be able to do more. Even Dis is right that uh, it didn't help the first time. It's better than nothing. This is gonna get. Didn't work very well this month. Organization and toughness. The sun finally dawns again on your birthday. You wake early and climb to the top of the engineering 
to watch the first sun watery rays break the horizon as the wormhole recedes across the sky. Dawn should represent hope for the long period of darkness, but the light only reveals the full extent of the damage to the colony. Been having trouble sleeping, like most people. It's hard to find rest crammed into the classroom with the, all the other kids and families. And every time you close your eyes, you see... You shake your head to clear the memories. You pull your blanket more tightly around your shoulders. You're not, not your blanket. The one, that one's gone. And you stare out the sunrise of rising, meager and sickly. Hey, kiddo. You hear when, <clears throat> you hear, then your dad comes and sits down beside you. I was looking for you. Nice view, huh? At least we get, we got a rooftop patio out of the deal. He laughs a little at his own joke and then just sort of trails off with a sigh afterward puts his arms around your shoulder and you sit in silence for a while watching the sunrise pick out all the broken glass littering the field glimmering like the field of stars neither of you really know what to say it's clear your dad feels like he is given has to give you a pep talk but there's no there's an oppressive nature to the silence that makes it feel impossible to either for either of you to start Eventually, eventually, he just sighs in his shoulder slump. I know things seem pretty bad right now, he says, squinting into the sunrise. It sounds like it's t taking all his effort not to cry, but I get better. It'll get better. It has to, right? You're not sure. At least your mom wasn't here to see this, he mutters. That's the silver lining, I guess. You watch the sunrise together for a few more minutes. After a bit, your dad musters up a brave smile and pulls out a little box tied with a piece of gardening twine. Happy birthday, my little rutabaga. Mm -hmm. Son of Medallion 2. You know what it is before you open it. An old medallion, the one your dad made with the sun on it that represents the earth. As broken during the attack, what was broken during the attack and all the chaos you didn't even notice but your dad did and he made you a new one it was like you it's just like you remembered similar design with the wormhole this time to represent v you thank him and squint out at the swirling wormhole still barely visible in the brightened sky it's so massive and awe-inspiring this time of year but it is always seems to herald disaster you're happy to watch it fade away into daylight your dad slapped you on the back. What's a birthday, huh? Here's hoping you'll be you'll get better for from here. You both head back downstairs to the wreckage on of the canteen where they put up temporary roofing with whatever tarps and scraps they could find. The colony nanoprinters, the few that are still run, have been working day and night to replace the necessities of life, but larger construction projects are going to take some time. Aunt Anne has coaxed the kitchen nanoprinters into making soy gruel and press bars life-sustaining but depressing you and the other colonists eat your breakfast in story in stony silence as you mentally prepare for the day governor edict looks more frail than you've ever seen her but her eyes remain determined last week they held a mass funeral for everyone who died they talked of turning this uh, stratospheric destroyed front half into a memorial shrine after everything useful has been salvaged there's still so much to do lordy what do you want god damn i assume all we can do is work which is okay. Which... My controller died? Oh, no, okay. We'll rebuild. You're signed to help out in geoponics. Agriculturists have been hard at work trying to salvage what they can of the ruined fields and the destroyed greenhouses, but there is still a lot of work to be done. Your dad has taken over as chief cultivator, so seeding your mom was already difficult for him, and now there is this. He's never been the kind of guy to hide from hard work, but he's been pretty distant lately. 
Cal's working in geoponics too, of course. He smiles when he sees you. Hey, Ophelia. There's a lot of stuff to do. What do you want to work on? Repairing the greenhouses. The geopodics domes, uh, miraculous prefab modular structures your parents brought from Earth are in shambles. Much of the glass and metal is beyond repair, disdained from the recycler. You and Cal help clear away the debris, and when that's done, you help drape tarps over what's still standing so that the drifting spark snow doesn't pile up inside and affect the soil acidity. Anything that can't survive outside climate control greenhouses needs to be harvested and sent to the kitchen so that it can be preserved. Canning, jarring, dehydrating, ancient techniques you've learned about in school, but didn't think you'd have to put into practice so soon. Everyone's worried that this will be the final nail in the coffin for our food supply after the famine last year. You try not to think about it too hard. Instead, you focus on just doing what you can to re help rebuild. Yay, we won. Toughness and organization. Organizing. You eat the mess tents where you hear something rumble. Your bowl and cutlery start rattling. People look around in alarm. Could be another attack so soon. You begin to hear the shouting from outside. Someone runs to the tent. There's something falling from the sky. It's on fire. You join the crowd of people leaving your temporary structure to gather the colony square. People are squinting up at the milky, quiet sunlight, pointing and gesturing wildly. It's impossible to miss thing hurling towards you from space, like a great big ball of fire coming straight for you. Is it that red thing? Is this it? Is this the end? After all you've been through, a meteor's gonna land in the middle of your already ruined colony and kill you all? Oh. Maz grabs your shoulder. It's another ship! Look, look, it's another spaceship from Earth! You stare up, unbelieve, unbelieving at the rapidly approaching ship. The flames of its entry into the atmosphere just, uh, dissipate, but a thick column of greasy black smoke trails behind it. Soon you hear the whistle rapping through the atmosphere in terminal velocity. It's coming right at us. It's not a controlled descent! It's an enormous ship coming your way too fast. The ship reverse thrusters fire, trying to slow down so it doesn't smash into a billion pieces when it hits the planet. Everyone scatters to take cover. They crouch behind rocks, throw their arms over their head, and squeeze your eyes shut. You hear a massive spaceship touch down ge in geoponics, plowing through the field and grinding over what's left of the greenhouses. You're thrown onto the ground for the force of the impact is scrap strapnel and small rocks zing past your head. It grinds along some roaring monster, like some roaring monster, cutting great scar through the colony and kicking up enormous cloud of dust. Finally, the ship comes to a creaking, shuddering halt. You and the other colonists carefully crawl out of the hiding places, coughing and rubbing your eyes. The new ship, half buried and obscured by dust, but you could tell it's from Earth. You squint and make out the stencil letters. Heliopause? Heliopause? A hatch opens and the side of the silhouette begins to emerge. Silhouettes with guns. Soldiers march out of the dust, quickly surrounding all the remaining colonists. More soldiers from two parallel lines of the ship, the square. The guns and parade rest along... And a lone firing stride, a uh, figure strides down the center towards you. Greetings, fugitives of Earth, the man says, spreading his hands wide. A dismayed murmur, a uh, dismayed murmur ripples through the crowd. The adults exchange significant looks. Chief Engineer Instant tries to slip out of the crowd, but she's stopped by a line of soldiers. The man smiles. He has a broad, easygoing smile that doesn't match the threatening aura of his soldiers, nor the smoking ruin of the ship behind him. I am Commander Lum, he says proudly, a captain of the Holopause. I have come to render aid and bring you to justice. Tried to sneak away. What the fuck? The Heliopause soldiers have a colonist surrounded and shove you gently but forcefully back to line. Listen with the others. It accepts forward of the crown. You're not commander of the Heliopods. Where's the person I was speaking to? Commander Mirawak. 
Mirawak. Everyone is surprised. Edic has been in communication with the ship for how long? I am captain of the Heliopause. According to the chain of command, we uh, sustained significant loss of personnel when we went through the wormhole. You can't help but notice many of the soldiers' strange looks this time. You wonder many people had died before Loom became commander. As a commanding officer, I declare this colony under our protection. As such, you are all now subject to the laws of Earth. To be quite blunt, young man, it appears you need us much as much as we need you. The Vitermina colony, such as it is, offers our hospitality to our guests from Earth. Loom opens his mouth, but Adik cuts him off. Now, now, there's no need for posturing. Whatever the purpose of your mission here, you'll soon learn that on this side of the wormhole, we're all humans. Right now, we need each other more than we need mandates from Earth. Etiquette turns to the assembly colonists. Effective immediately, I will be stepping down as governor and turning leadership to Council Loom of the Heliopause, she says. I hope that hope that will satisfy your craving for justice at least while you get your feet under us judging for the number of guns displayed you don't think you have a choice in this no one knows what how to react new government from earth nearly a hundred new colonists most of them trained soldiers what does this mean for the colony the crowd disperses slowly and the council members follow loom back to the heliopause presumably to talk about the future of the colony you hope you track down your friends. So what do you think these of these new people? They're just going to boss us around. They don't live here. They don't know what it's like. And they just are going to swoop in and act like they're better than us. Did you see what they were doing to instance? The entire colony is now twice as many of you set to work on salvaging the wreckage of the heliopause, tearing down and combining it with the stratospheric remaining engine section. Spirits are high, though the new colonists from the heliopause aren't like any people you've ever met before. With the uniforms and weapons, they're more like invading force than rescue. You aren't sure what this means for the colony or for your future. As the dust settles and rebuild and you rebuild your colony around the new ship, the Heliopause, new arrival soldier mainly are aloof at the first. Many see you as fugitives. Together, you build new walls, living quarters, greenhouses, and massive bunkers, garrison, bunkered garrisons. The Strato Engineering Wing is the only remaining of your old colony. The Heliopause brought enough rations for another five years, as well as a rich seed bank to work the hydroponics. Finally, an end of the slow starvation you've felt for years. They also have more guns, explosives than you've ever seen in your life. Even the ship has guns. A full stomach, roof over your heads, and the promise of safety convinces most strato colonists to accept the Helios. In turn, the Helios decide that, your crim that you criminals pose little threat. A grudging peace is broken between you two groups. You decide there aren't they aren't so different, really. They're just... They're e there are even Helio children born among the stars just like you. New friends? We got our bedroom? After months of hard work, you and your dad move into a new quarters, and you have your own bedroom for the first time in your life. The place you pictured your mother... Uh, a place... You place a picture of your mother on the shelf beside your bed. You step onto your very own balcony to watch New Colony. Its grounds bustling with many strangers and strange new ideas. You feel like something rising in your chest when you haven't felt in some time. Hope? Excitement? What will we have in new, uh, news bring? You better get ready to find out. Rush outside to greet the day. This is the new lounge, living quarters. Let me sit up. The new common areas hastily constructed platforms hanging in the side of the heliopause. Crews are hard at work incorporating rigid hull into a natural landscape, creating charming open air place for gathering and eating and relaxing. Just outside you can hear construction happening. Okay. Who's that? And who's that? We got new friends. This is engineering? 
No, this is command. Okay. It's our friend. There's dad. Then you domes. Geoponics is a buzz of activity. Repairs of the domes are underway and the fields are being replanted. Hydroponics from the heliopause are being installed. Dad! There's so much new stuff! This is the new... Garrison? The Garrison. The Helios have replaced the old Garrison Dojo with a huge underground bunker. It's much larger and better supplied and abuzz with activity. Soldiers drilling weapons, being cleaned and inventoried, and animals herded into cages to, for study. You can't believe how many soldiers are down here. It must be the safest place in the world. Okay, this is school. Engineering is the same. They just moved it, I think. And here's the balls. So how do you get outside? Get it through here? Up here. Okay. Well, let's talk to everybody. Everything dies, Dis says, plucking is some dead grass below. It always <laughs> blowing it away in the wind. Plants, people, civilization. Even the plant's gonna die. Plant is gonna die on a long enough timeline. Why even bother fighting it? Why try to do anything at all? Can you believe etiquette? She's washed up old bureaucrat who has no idea how to lead us in a crisis. She totally has given up. She just stepped down so someone else can actually get things done. Hello. The colony's full of new people. Everywhere you look, you see a stranger. It's disor uh, disorientating in, after growing up in a closed spaceship. You never... Expected to meet any other humans that weren't made here and be. It's a furry. I like his outfit though. Like plastic on the sleeves. It's like a furry and BDS like club kinky outfit. I'm confused. He's a dog. You bump straight into one of these new people while you're jogging through the colony. Oof, he laughs and holds up a steady Hold you steady, brushing the Im imaginary dust off you and giving you a wide fang smile. Hey, it's one of the kids from the Heliopause. You think his name is Rex? Uh, hi, hello, wow. I'm just gonna be nice. Hi. He sticks out a hand and shakes his, and he laughs. You notice he's wiggling his dog ears. They can really move independently. Pleased to meet you, I'm Rex, and I love to shake a paw. I know a ton of tricks, he winks. Reg's augment, augment is being a dog? <laughs> ah, since I'm new here, do you think you could help me find the construction art? I thought I might apply the job there. <laughs> I mean, why not? For you, anything. His eyes widen as you wink suggestively and he grins, wiggling his ears and lolling his tongue out like a dog. So adorable. I might just take you up on that, he says. You tell him everything... About is a bit changed since the heliopa uh, heliopause landed, but you think the construction yard is still near command. He thanks you for the directions. I want to flirt with everybody now. Nami, Nami? You've seen Nami, Nami around since the heliopause landed. They're around your age, are barely a meter and a half tall, only coming up to your shoulders. You've never seen anyone dressed so strangely as they do. It's not very strange. Hi! Their voice is high-pitched and quick. I'm Nami Nami. It's short for nomination. You do a little twirl. She, they do a little twirl bow and you do yourself. Ask about their outfit. Oh, this old thing. I designed it myself. A Nami Nami original. Based on the outfit 
Levandul Starlift wears in the third season of Turbo Girl Hyperjet Transform, when she was she has to work undercover as the lead singer of an idol group. They stick out, stick their leg out. Only I changed the bottom part, of course. I have to wear my gaming gauntlets. I call them gaming gauntlets, but they're really inva uh, in Enviro suit gloves that I modded so I can play hollow games through them. Do you like games? My fave is Laser Fable and Dig Dig Digger Digger Dog. Laser Fable is so much more fun now that you can play outside with a room to run, to run around. What kind of holograms do Strato kids like to play? Challenge them the game of Laser Fable. You're on! Let me help you install it on your hologram. Hall palm and explains the rules. Laser Fable is an augment reality game where you balance hologram lasers off real objects nearby. It's speed based. Okay. Heart becomes a physical red. Plus two to cars with gems, yeah. I need 19. We'll come back. Right on, sister. Num gives you a half high five with a couple quick flicks of her of their gauntlets. Uh oh, flick of their gauntlet gives you the kudos for winning. They explain this is how they always play Laser Fable with the kids in the heliosphere. Except they mostly don't want to play anymore. They say they're too old for it. They just want to be soldiers now. Except Rex, he's still cool. Okay. Hi, cow. The new kid, the dog boy, Rex, showed me how to play this. He says, growing... Oh, wait. Cal is kicking a small beam bag in the air, trying not to let it touch the ground. He's not very successful. He says, groaning as the bean bag hits the ground again. It's a lot harder than it looks. Want to hear a fun nature fact? Embrace it. Embracing lessons. Keep between rounds. You tell him about... the. The time Tanj brought a skunk bug for show and tell in biology and got scared and and it got scared and made the worst s most smelliest gross stink you've ever smelled and everyone thought Tanj had farted. The professor Hal had to clear the whole room and took weeks to get the smell of the bean bags and it, it was so gross. Also kind of neat how such a tiny bug can make a whole room of kids run away. I remember that, Ophelia, except the way I heard it, it wasn't Tange, it was you. Definitely wasn't me. I would never do such a thing. You know? I, personally, would never. Tange. I wonder who will teach Professor House class now. Age is cer certainly not no indicator of ability. Perhaps I may call upon, be called upon to share what I know. Of course, it's such a shame he's gone. Where is... Oh, there you are. Nimmy! Nimmy! Never thought I'd actually be using one of these. Oh. Nimmy fiddles with her personal defense plaza cutter. Guess we'll be... We all gotta be ready to defend ourselves now. Wanna train together? Nimmy suggests you practice some hand-to-hand -hand combat and then kicks your butt in the absolute most literal sense. She leans over while you're laying on the floor and completely gra gas. You okay? I didn't go too hard, right? Hello? 
The new boy from the hill of uh, sphere is a couple years older than you. He's very handsome and the missing arm. Oh, he has a missing arm. He does. <clears throat> uh, missing arm gives him a heroic battle scarred vibe. He stands tall and ready to for action, even though it's a normal boring day. The other re uh, recruits milling around the garrison give him a wide respect of respectful berth. He seems to be sees you staring and gives you a curt nod. My name is Vase, Lieutenant Lieutenant Vase, Lieutenant Olivasis, he says. Lieutenant Olivasis, he says, considering you with a glint challenge in his eye. And you are? How do you enjoy those? I am practically run this place. His expression doesn't change. Is that right? He says, with his air of, air of a boy who's hard to impress. Nice to meet you, Ophelia. I hear it's been a rough couple of years for the colony. Luckily, things here are, things are heliopods came along just in time. Don't worry. We have some of the best soldiers, the very best. We'll keep the colony safe. Are you one of the best soldiers? We train as a team, but... Yes, I won more than my share of zero G judo matches and virtual ri uh riflery. What riflery tournaments even competing against adults. Hey, we'll flirt with him. This is my kind of dude in a book. I'd be like, "Hey, the tough guy. The tough mysterious man. We'll flirt with him. Why not?" Wow, you're pretty cool. You act impressed to make some it makes embarrassing the clear signals that you find him attractive. Well, he says, nodding like he understands. Aren't you intri aren't you intriguing? Maybe we'll see more of each other in the self defense class. Oh wait a minute. Don't don't play with my emotions, sir. An older boy acknowledging me I can't believe it. But I have to go to actual class today. I'm so sorry. Um, friends with Nami and Nami. I wanted to work on my empathy just a little bit more, so let's get to it. Oh, nougat! Is it nougat? Kitty is eight, and you don't think she's stood still since she was born. She's having trouble in the classroom setting, but that's why you're here. S some kids just need more help than others to stay focused. She's working on using her fingers to spell out words to match images on the hollow palm. Her chubby little kid hands are unsteady, and her letters are pretty misshapen. That's pretty normal for most of the kids you tutor, but Nougat just doesn't seem to be getting any better no matter how many times she's drill you drill letters it feels like you have to tell her the same thing over and over because she says okay but just keeps making the same mistake i never seen an elephant nougat says jabbing her fingers in a hologram or a lion did you see a lion ophelia you've never seen any earth animals except on holovitz like nougat you were born in the spaceship already hurt hurtling away from earth you never even seen a dog despite learning all the them, about them in class when we were kids. Nugget's trouble with the imaginary concept like elephants and hollow screens. It makes it hard for her to keep attention. Let's look for some inspiration. I don't like writing, Nugget mumbers, looking down at her hand. It's boring. That gives you an idea. Hey, Squirt, I heard your... Cal greets Nougat as you enter the garden. I heard you're looking to go on a safari. Well, I'm the guy today. Let's go. He puts his hands on Nougat's shoulder and guides her into the tall plants of the garden, giving you a wink as he does. Don't forget to take notes on your field journal, he says loudly and obviously. But Nougat practically leaps the chance to pretend to be a real actual explorer. While Nougat happily takes notice of the wild animals in the garden, you log the classroom's evaluation rubric and make note that Nougat should be allowed to find real-world applications for her knowledge whenever possible. This should help keep her active and interested. Chief Engineer Instant reviews the changes and approves it, and sends you a few kudos to thank you for taking the time to think outside the box for Nougat. It's because we're a great teacher.
Okay. I don't think I can. But giving up. I need to learn engineering an animal. I assume the animal is over here. Oh, hi, Dad. Are you sick? Even though it hurts, you find yourself wandering over to Geoponics. It feels not good to be here in the place your mom loved and ultimately gave her life to, but not good. But not not good either. It feels like when you have a brute. It feels like when you have a bruise and you can't stop yourself from pushing on it because the pain reminds you the injury is real. Like your mom dying is a huge invisible wound and poking it at force, uh, it forces to f you to feel something instead of being numb. Your dad is taking time off for work. Your parents work double and triple shifts during the growing season this year. And now that it's over, it feels... It just feels cruel. When people work hard, they should be able to look back at what they did and feel proud. Instead, there's just this huge gap where mom should be. You find your dad sitting in your mom's personal garden and miraculously starting to grow again, despite being trampled flat during the last attack and neglected during the famine before that. Still, various Venturnian flowers are starting to sprout, as well as hardier earth ones, like dandelions. Your dad looks up at the must musters a smile. He passed the bench beside him. Talk to him. You fall star in you a few times. It's almost impossible to think of something to say when there's this magnitude of grief between you. He gives you time. When it's obvious that you want to talk, but you don't know what to say, he just takes your hand in his two large ones. Did I ever tell you about how your mom and I started dating? You shake your head, and you know they grew up together the first colony on Earth, but nothing about their relationship. He smiles and looks at the garden as he remembers. I always thought she was way too cool for me, he says quietly. Things were, well, people didn't like us much on Earth, so she always kind of a... She was always kind of a bruiser. Always ready to pop off, even when she was your age. She and Rhett were the same back then. I also thought, always thought they were going to end up together. And then your mom got injured in, when the first colony was attacked. I was working part-time in the clinic, and I guess that's when she realized I liked her. We had to apply to get to the... We had to apply to get to the stratospheric. We only been seeing each other a few weeks, so I was surprised when she said we should apply as a couple. They wanted all different kinds of family groups. Single people, couples who could have kids or couldn't. Triad... Tri triads and quads. But we all had to be young and they weren't many teenagers willing to commit to being a, you know, mated pair. It upped our chances of being picked. He laughs and scrubs his face with his hands. She wanted to get off the planet more than anything. I don't think she realized she'd fallen in love with me until she, we were already in space. Lucky for me, right? Your dad shakes his head fondly. There aren't many people like your mom, kiddo. You're not surprised to feel the tear trickle down your cheek. There's so much you don't know about her and what she was like more than just being your mom. It's really hitting you that she was a person before you knew her, and now you'll never know her like that. There's a past you'll never fully know, just like there's a future that she never, never will. Dad puts an arm around your shoulder, and you sit like, sit like that for a long while. Oh, more? Like every pollen season, your dad gets the shimmers. The pollen is bad this year. Thick, heavy clouds of pink. Even your eyes are a little itchy. And your dad's not the only colonist spending the week in bed. You can hear other people sneezing as they walk through the quarters, bringing him hot trippet. Tri tri tripe soup. Ew, tripe. Thanks, kiddo. Your mom never got sick. Not ever. I'm not sure she misses the days of work. Missed a day of work from the day we landed until... The day she... He stops. I miss your mom. I wish Inces would find a cure already. Three years and all we can suggest is bed rest and fluids. What good is all the researching if it can't fix my headache? Your dad must be feeling really sick. He never complains about stuff. You check his temperature with the hollow palm and dim the lights and bring him a cold pack for his forehead. He has crusty... He has a crust of glittery pink gunk around his lips looking cracked and gross so you wipe it away the glitter is just everywhere on him like it's coming right out of his pores 
He looks iridescent in the murky light flittering through the pollen outside. Hey, do you mind opening the window a little for some fresh air? It smells like sick people in here. No, you don't know. The pollen might already have be everywhere already, but there's no sense of making it worse. You pretend to crack the window for him, and by the time you look over, he's asleep again. The worst of the pollen fog subsides a few days, and your dad starts looking a little better. He gets back to work, which is good because there's a lot to do in order to rebuild the colony and get the Heliopause's hydroponics up to running. Still sweeping glitter dust out of your quarters weeks later. That stuff gets everywhere. Toughness in biology. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I want to... Yeah, we're gonna go down here. I'm gonna do defense training. Security Chief Red interrupts your afternoon train to address the group. Nemi perks up and seems important, since the original colony was destroyed. We have needed every skilled security officer we can to find to defend our home. And now with Governor Loom's blessing, age is no longer a requirement. We are looking for younger recruits to join the ranks of the defense squad. This is a serious job. You'll be a soldier, not a little kid learning self-defense or peering down from the safety of the walls. You will be in danger. You need to be brave and you know your way around weapons. Step four, if you think you got what it takes to defend the colony. I'm going to quietly hang back for now. I don't know if that's like you have to do it. Good, he says to those who step forward, including Nimi. For the rest of you, if you change your mind and you want to enjoy real soldiers, you know where to find my offices. to give up. I don't have anything to change. I don't expect you to know this, but I'm kind of a big deal, Vance. Vase says. Sure, this is my first time planet side, but among the other recruits, everyone listens to me. So if you want to make a good impression on the others, you should try to impress me first. He looks you up and down. The operative word being try. You want a crystal? Vase gives you a crude nod and tosses the gift on your nearby table. Thanks. What a jackass. Hello. Rex has gotten uh, used to life on the surface yet. You remember your first year. V seemed like seemed enormous, so full of danger and mysteries. Well, it still does, but the shock of it wore off. Rex still has that slight bewildered look on his face every time he walks outside. The sunlight hits his face so bright. Have a hug. He seems like a huggy guy. Hugs incoming. Uh, really? I mean, yeah, sure, of course, obviously, but he embraces you, wrap your arm comfortably in a hug. Don't get mad at me when your word gets out, word back to vase that you're hanging out with me, okay? Dude's got eyes everywhere. Good hug, the kind that makes you instantly just a little, relax a little. What do you mean? I don't even know that man. I don't even know 
kill that man. Vase better take it take it down a notch. I'm gonna work on my animals. We're gonna survey the plains. Yes? Chief Surveyor Utopia stops you in this near the depot. Feel that? You can feel the kind of ominous distant thumping pulse regularly through the ground. If you stand still, you can feel the vibrate, vibrate upon your own body too, like a massive globe, global pulse. Hmm, Utopia says, Utopia says, checking the readout of her holopalm. I reckon it's naturally occurring, but it gives me the willies of the same. You better, you two better check it out. Mind you stick together and take reading readings on the way, in case it's dangerous. You follow the thumping and now audible noises growing louder west until you roughly triangulate the location. You know it's getting better uh, getting cl close, but it sounds like it's coming from all around you. Your instruments aren't precise enough. Follow it. Let's see if this works. Oh wow, work this time. use this. Oh, that's even worse. Lord. Yep, give up. <laughs> Whatever. Sounds is coming from everywhere. You don't know a dang clue. Dis is frustrated. Come on, it's gotta be somewhere, he yells, and the planet doesn't give up her secret. Okay, whatever. I'm tired of it. I can't ever win any of these fucking ones out here. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah, you big bush bitch. I'm just gonna watch it. I've already bought one of those. I'm gonna keep watching it. looking for something to bring back. At least there's that. Another one of those fuckers. Another one of those fuckers. What do you mean? Bravely challenge. Zero.
future. I don't know why I like to work backwards. One bravery. The creature pawns past you in a powerful stolen like gorilla arm, smash the ground. It doesn't even seem to see you. It goes around without even looking at you. Yeah. We've already done that one. I'm trying to find ooh, what's this? The train here is strange. Some kind of smooth rock covered in lichens and tiny plants. It's weirdly warm and sparks snow smelts when it hits. that at least we're winning some now after cautiously walking around it on a few minutes and observing quietly you realize the ground is alive it's rumbling very slightly what you thought was just a rock slowly opening its eyes it stares at you dreamily and you stare back fascinated it must have been a very ancient creature it's so vast it just completely merged with the surroundings there's even a tree growing out of it a little animal like a moth with a huge webbed feet lands between you and massive eye and starts peering the eyes dilates to focus on the moth then it slowly closes again and what you think might be contentment after a minute you feel the faintest rumble under your feet regular breathing in and out snoring you creep off the creature and careful not to wake it again okay i'm gonna go a little longer on this episode if I oh we can be friends with Rex sure and then no time off here right where did the ah oh, there it is yeah let's go be where's the blue Rex. We're not really friends with him. The old lounge is toast, and what's left is from Attack Alaska was destroyed in the crash. The new lounge is just as the same. You missed the bean bags and the walls covered with the art you scrawled as kids. Some days, this place feels like it's the heart of the colony again, but right now, it just reminds you of how chaotic and horrible this the past year has been. Okay with those ones. Not the festival, my dog. The V-Fest is a welcome day of normalcy in an otherwise chaotic year. Despite some lingering rivalry between the two factions, 
V is a chance for the Helios and Stratos to come together and appreciate the bounty of the planet. At least that's what the adults say. As Governor Loom takes the stage to address the colony, you can't help but notice the crowd has segregated itself according to their ship origin. Rex shoots you away from over at the Strato side, and Nami makes a silly face. Vase is surrounded by other young soldiers and all looking sharp at the helipod's uniforms. With Dis standing beside you, you wonder if the two ships will ever feel like one colony. A fanfare plays over the squa square's announcement system. Loom honors guards to complex drills with their drone rifles. Greeting people of V. We, all, we may be far from beautiful Earth, but we can still celebrate and be thankful for what we have here. We've worked hard to save on the... Save this begrudged little colony from the brink of destruction and should be proud of our work. Helios cheer, your side of the square is more quiet. I know some of you have been asking, Loom, how are you going to do it all by yourself? How are you going to run a colony, solve everyone's problems, turn this planet into a paradise, and look and look this good? Lem strikes a pose and smatter polite pause. Well, I have an answer for you. The old council made a lot of bad choices, like illegally leaving Earth. But I believe in the second chances, so I've appointed the original department heads to my own council, Loom Council 2.0. Better not disappoint me, he laughs and makes finger guns at the department heads as the foot of his podium. Stay on your toes, Stratos. I also want to promise everyone here today that we're going to make V safe for you. Humans. The next time those bastard Xenos attack, we're going to blow them to so many pieces they won't be enough to light left to wipe off your boots. We've already got the defenses, he says, gesturing broadly to the new, taller, thicker walls. And we're building homes for everyone. Homes where people can raise children again, knowing that our military men and women are keeping us safe. Big cheers from both sides this time. Some of the colonists around you even have tears in their eyes, especially those who lost family in the last attack. Loom goes on for a while, lionizing the Heliopause's military strength and casting subtle digs at your failed colony experiment. Finally, the crowd disperses to the set up a square at afternoon festival, some traditional and some new. At the table, Aunt Anne and the kids are sitting out a spread of dinner. There's an unimaginable amount of food, thanks to the Heliopause's huge ration supplies and the piles upon piles of Xeno meat from the hunting parties, for those who can stomach it. Annie is all, Anne is all smiles, clearly making an effort to move on from Lum mandates despite still mourning the loss of, her, of calm. But even the festival atmosphere can force a smile on Nemi's face. I miss my mom. Yeah, me too. She should have been here to see this. I think she'd be proud of how hard we've worked in Geopods. It chimes the sound of the competition. Xeno wrangling? Trivia. Fine! Xeno wrangling, let's go! Without calm to run the obstacle course, the physical competition has been replaced for the float cow rodeo. The bulls have had their air bladders emptied and weights attached to their grasshopper legs, keeping them low to the wrangle. Nemi joins the rodeo along with Vase. She fiercely dedicates to the participation of calm's memory. This is cruel. Float cows are friends, not foes. Yeah, that's true. That's road. 86. So if I, oh, sorry, if I place this here and place that, does it become two? Hmm. 
19. We did win. There's nothing I really do. I'm not really good at this. Defeated. On your turn, you bounce so hard you hit the dirt by an Henri Bull that you can feel your intestines untangle. Better luck next year. Vance wins the rodeo by a large margin, despite having little experience with animals. Nemi didn't have her heart in after all, and she slinks away before the war is given out. After the festival, the mood of the colony is a lot lighter and people are smiling easier. It's often see mixed groups of Helios and Sarah socialize together. It feels like the first time the people have ever actually let themselves relax. Hmm. Relaxing? Let's see. Let's see how our friends are. This is at 49. Three mystery. Wait, we never worked in the kitchen yet. What does that do? Creativity, empathy, and kudos. Nice! Back in space, cooking involved programming ration machines and putting dishes in their lasermatic dishwasher because water was too precious, precious to clean dishes with. But now you're growing more real food and trying to figure out how to cook with it. The cafeteria kitchen area kitchens are bright and full of good smells. They're always something baking and boiling or frying. Take a deep breath and just hold all the deliciousness in your lungs. Chef Steward Anne knows that the kids as antecedent is a, in charge of everything in the living quarters, running the children's crash, coordinating the cleaning bots, and of course cooking for the whole colony. It's a lot of work, but she's good at diligently to all the kids who ha she has raised here, including you. She's a big believer in learning by trying and doesn't mind if a few dinners are ruined in the process. It looks like you're on your own this morning. Don't you worry, though. We'll start off with something easy. She shows you the kitchen nanoprinters. Just press this button and then ration machine will spit out the freshly pressed cake of soy rations. It's not tasty, but it's nutritious. She shows you the range. A large pot of brown stew is bubbling. Here's where the real magic happens, she says proudly. She takes the ladle of spoon and spoon for some of the stew and so you can have a taste. See, for these stew for this stew, we add homegrown veggies and spices. This is what I love about cooking, turning raw ingredients into something better, just by adding a little bit of work and a lot of love. Just like raising children. How about you, Ophelia? Why don't you why do you want to work in the kitchen? I like providing for others. Feels good to know loved ones is happy and well fed because of you. You tell this to Aunt Anne and she smiles indulgently. That's a fa uh that's a fantastic reason, Ophelia. We need a little happiness around here. Auntie Aunt Anne sets uh you up with a few basic kitchen tasks and leaves you to it. If you need help, I'll be just around the corner. Or you can ask congruence for advice. She has every recipe and method you could ever need, and she's an excellent teacher. You're quick to have your 
What does this bring? Oh, this is telling me what I'm working, I think. You're quick to have your hands full with the sheer volume of food that it takes to feed hundreds of people. Workers from the canteen shuttle back to pick up trays of soy rations and pots of stew at regular intervals. Somehow, you keep up. You poke your head into the canteen and at lunchtime to see what people think about the food. Seems they like it. Maybe you're cut out to be a chef. Maybe I am. I do love chefs. Love me some food. We won! Creativity Empathy. Hmm. We should work on our organizing. Where is the main building? They've changed the locations of everything. I don't know where I'm going. Up here, I think. Hi, Rex. Friends with Rex and Mars and Rex. Okay. Deliver supplies. Your geoponics delivering a load of fertile soil that those surveyors have brought in from outside the wall. It all goes towards restoring the outdoor garden beds and for the hardy root vegetables and native plants. Hawk reach you and helps you guide the hover lift to the unloading zone. Heavy. Looks heavy. I could take it from here. I bet I can lift more than you. Cal looks awful. Uh, you don't need to. Seriously, don't hurt yourself, Ophelia. It's not the competition. Ophelia, smash! Oh. You show those sacks of soil the boss. Yeah, no... No one ever's lifted anything so well ever. You're the best at lifting heavy things. You flex your big muscles and look over to Cal, hoping to impress. Cal looks uncomfortable. Okay, like I said, not everything's a competition, Ophelia. Okay, Cal, take a joke. It's fine. There we go. Nice win. Oh, a new perk. Collectibles respawn faster, more slot and more slots are filled. Yeah, but how do I not this? How do I unlock my gear slots? You think it's organization? Where are we at with organization? I think the next one will make it work, so let's see if it's organizing. Who? <gasps> You're trying to find administrators seek to ask about something and accidentally stumble into the meeting they're having with Governor, Governor Loom. You didn't catch the topic of the argument, but you managed to piece together that Seek is trying to get Loom to come up with a way to explain something important to the colony. Whatever it is, Loom is dismissive about it. You hear him say he's not here to hold people's hands, which frustrates Seek. Figured out, Seek, Loom says. That's your job. Spy on them. You pretend to organize some papers to listen in. The colony is spending a lot of resources on security squad, and these need to come from other departments. Seek tells Loom he has to present the budget to the convince the council this is necessary. The governor is tired and cranky and doesn't want to bother with another boring meeting. Loom rubs his temples. Ugh, why is this my job? He complains, even though it's clearly his responsibility. Can I get an assistant to take care of it? Assassinate him. <laughs> Just assassinate him. Ignore them and you've gotten better things to do than listen to Lum and Seek argue about administration. It does seem like they need an assistant though. Maybe you could offer to service later when you're not when you're not busy. Ooh, a new job?
I'm not going to waste organization, but we got to where we needed. Now, let's see. New perk? Extra gear slot. Okay, exactly like I fucking thought. Sickening, sickening, sickening. So, let's see. Plus five to challenges, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna do plus five to challenges and the combat. Sickening, 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 sickening. Sup? Damn. Vince is standing by down Heliopause, hands on his hip, and surveying the colony. Damn, he says. You all used to live like this. It's a good thing we're here now. Want something? There you go. Have one of these. What even is this? A birthday gift? The Stratos have a strange taste. It's his birthday! Okay. Well, you don't have to be an asshole about it. I'm just being friendly. I haven't tried this new plant. On my BFF. Where's he at? Where's he at? Where are you? Little emo boy, where are you? Where are you? I do not see you. You must be outside the gate. Out here? Why bother? Why are we... Yeah, yeah. Ooh. His eyes light up when he sees you get... Whoa, he says, taking them from you with un... Characteristic delight. Are these pieces of jelly arc root network? Or is it dormant butterfly bush? Where'd you find these? Likes medicinal roots. My dude. You catch this on the ridge overlooking the wilderness, bobbing his head along to something playing through his ear speak. He doesn't notice you walk up. He jumps when you tap him on the shoulder and scrambles to turn off his holopom. Don't sneak up on me like that. Man, I was just getting the good part of the song. What are you listening to? Just some old music from Earth. You probably wouldn't like it. Try me. You sit down beside Dis and extend your hand to link your holograms. Dis stares at you for a second before pressing his palm to yours, and the music floods in your brain through the head, through your ear speak. Dis takes his hand back and waves his fingers to get weaves his finger timidly. I I listen to a lot of Earth music. He says, "Do you like it?" I love this band. This cracks a smile, relieved. Good. It's my favorite right now. I always listen to the same album on repeat. It's comfort music. I really like her voice. He stares at his lap. Sometimes I feel like the lyrics are about me. They're so deep. Like my soul really gets this kind of music. But don't don't tell anyone, okay? It makes me feel better thinking that someone knows my pain, even if it's just a dead earth woman. Sounds deep, man. Yeah, I have a lot of time to think. Not like anyone else here. Oh, We got pictures. While you lay back in the grass and listen to this music, you are wild. I'm gonna flirt with him a little bit. Hold his hand. You reach out tentatively and link your pinky fingers with this, feeling him tense up beside you. He darts you a nervous glance and he looks back at his sky when he seems when he sees you looking back at him. His cheeks go completely red. He doesn't hold he doesn't hold your hand, but he doesn't move his away either. Oh, we had a little moment. I'm so that's so cute. We're just friends. At this moment. I'm trying to see what vase is all about. You know what I mean? I'm trying to play for a little bit longer because I am waiting for a group game to start in a few minutes, so I won't be able to play after this. Let's go back to defense training to get some animal. Wait, this song is kind of a thing. You and Nemi are practicing judo moves, chucking each other into semi-deflated hoof shrooms, which have been set up for mate, for mats. 
You're leaning, you're learning to throw, but also to fall properly without getting hurt. It's pretty fun. The enormous mushrooms are surprising, springy, and bouncy. You right, and bounce you right back. I'm gonna focus on learning. You take training very seriously, and so does Nimi. You're just a good match for each other. She focus, she's focused, but she doesn't seem happy. Maybe she's throwing herself into this too hard, trying to live up to Calm's memory, or maybe she's just scared of dying like he did. Aww. What if I do all these zeros? What does this mean? At least we won. Okay, Vase, but there's not much more I can do for you. I'm gonna go explore nearby in the episode. Do I have to do what she says? Utopia is working near the gates and the area has been deemed safe enough for kids to go out for a hike so as you're back before dark and never out during glow. There aren't a lot to see out there. A logging cam and a few fields and some nice lookouts. Keep your eyes peeled for useful things that seem uh, like these mush woods logs. Lumber carriers have. Lumber carriers must have dropped it. It's fairly safe out there. Stuff to collect! Take nothing but photos, leave nothing but footprints. Suppose it's different on, brand, on a brand new planet like this. We actually do need samples and basically everything, especially stuff that might be edible. Things regrow pretty wild out here. If you pick up place clean, give it a year, and it better be look like it was never there we were never there at all. Joponic engineer set up a work site here using a rob a robo plow and tearing up the ground to prep for farming. You stroll up to the farmers with a wave and take a closer look at what they're doing. They ask if you want to help. plus one. You feel invigorated and learned a little more about farming. Ooh, and I got some biology, I think, out of that. Ahead of you, the road curves right, and there's a, a steep hill leading off to the left. A better, really great view. I got it. Okay, we've already done this one. <gasps> oh, we can push the rock down the hill. It comes... There comes a time in every childhood that one must take life by the horns and just push push the rock. You shove it with all your might, digging your toes into the hard ground and leaning in. The rock starts sliding. And suddenly it's off and satisfying lurch, cap catapulting down the hill, rolling faster and faster, crashing through bushes, and damn, the pack. The rock just rolled right over it. Damn! <laughs> you make your way back to retrieve your bag, now completely destroyed along with all its contents. Ah, shoot. I need a new pack. Well, that's just the worst, ain't it? Not the little floater again. We've already done this one as well. We need to come back when it's super, like... We have a lot of energy. Let's milk it. It's hard to milk a float cow that's upside down. She struggles and kicks her legs as if she's trying 
as as you try to flip her over long enough to get the udders. But thanks to the combination of might and empathy, if you managed to calm her down, she's still sick. Milk's supposed to collect her lower udder, not by her gas water. But at least she's balanced now, and she has a chance to get well on her own. Which one now? Okay. Poor bravery. It's the glow. This. Let's hang out with Rex. Let's be friends with Rex. Here we are, with another one of these. Lord help us. Let me open my game. Play. I'll read you off this. A rela you're relaxing your quarters with your dad when you hear the colony siren. The enemy is here. Your dad looks up from his novel. Huh, seems early this year. We should head to the shelter in the lounge. You've been drilling a new evacuation procedure. Um, a rush to the front line. Let's go. Why? Because we would never sit behind. I mean, we're not a soldier, but we're not going to sit behind. You must wrap with the rest of the defense force at the gates. Red and Loom are arguing about what tactics to employ. Loom keeps trying to rally the soldiers with a heartening speech and give it everything they've got. All the drones and explosives and Red uh, keeps cutting in. We don't need to take any big risks. The smaller attack, we have more than enough uh, pulse rifles and turrets. We should save the other resources for when we do need them. Why do things halfway? We need to get in there and kick their asses back to the goo they came from. We need to show people that we have everything under control for morale. What? Red is one more... Red tries one more time to wrestle the control forces back to Loom, but Loom cuts him off. Fire the explosive rounds! Arm the chargers. Loom is the worst. Shells scream through the permanent night, followed by explosions that feels vibra uh, you feel vibrate through your boots. The healers are unfazed by it, and the others start as guards exchange nervous looks. You hear yelling and another boom, the secondary explosion detonates. Bay and bloodthirst animals reach your ear, and then Loom holds his fingers to his ear speak. Great work. Just sh the stragglers are coming. Open the gates. Bruh. Bruh, bruh, bruh. You face off against a lesser Xeno, some kind of fin. What is the thumbs up for? Oh, it's kudos, plus 10. Okay. Some kind of fin, semi aquatic thing, already half dead and limping, dodging through the gates. It's almost comical how easy it is to stun and kill it. By the time you're done, the other soldiers have dispatched the rest of the creatures. Smoke drifts from the battlefield from explosions. Arcid scent of triumph. After attack, Loom gathers everyone in the lounge and holds a big celebration for the soldiers. There's a feast and drinking and songs of valor, and as the party goes on long into the night, some drift away in pairs or more. Mars and Rex keep a dance going. Even Nimi seems relaxed, especially when the other uh, cadets invite her to drink with them. Tonight, everyone seems convinced that this victory means the colony will be safe forever. Maybe will be. You sure want to believe it, too. Found it!
Oh, we're 16 now. Look at it. Oh, a crystal. Well, what do you have to say? I heard this place used to be a sports ball pitch. I've never played it. Was it fun? It sounds like it was a good exercise. And it made, it made star players like Nemi. It was pretty good at training people to protect the colony now, too. Okay. Hey, little girl, what you got to say? You guys don't have your to worry about us around. It's super great that we showed up when we did, right? Now the colony can protect itself and the people at Helio who didn't want to be soldiers. Well, we don't have to be. Nice. Rex is holding an ice pack. Oh, good. It's one of Vase's, Vase's little birds. What do you want? Hugs incoming. Uh, really? I mean, sure, of course. What does Vase have to do with anything? Where's my bestie? There's so much noise. It sucks, there's so much noise. Too many people, and there's nowhere I can just be alone. I wish I could just live in the forest. Dad? A blossom for my blossom. Ophelia, you ever had a moon juice straight from the tap? It's something else, I tell you. Ew. I don't know what moon juice is, but I feel like I would not be interested. What do you think we should work on? Engineering? Persuasion? Oh, wait. We have that job. We'll do one thing and then we'll be done for this episode because we're at a one hour and 30 minutes, which is pretty long even for me. Need persuasion. My persuasion needs to be higher. What the fuck? Where do I learn persuasion at? Cool. Run, 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 run. So, humanities. I can't fix it. You hear scuttling metallic legs. What the heck? A strange knee high robot bursts into your engineering lab, going full tilt on his six spidery legs. It slams into the wall. Hard enough to knock itself down. It seems to be having trouble getting back up again and flailing its metal legs. Put it back out in the hall. Ouch, it actually slashed you with her leg while scrambling to find purchase, stupid robot. Turn this TV thing, he wills it squeaky as the robot runs off the house. Sorry about that. I'm close to getting a new movement algorithm online. I'll have the robot, robot vax corner it and we could try again. Working with robots is just so hard with no hands. This was much easier when Hal was here. I miss him. Well, if you know anyone who loves tinkering with bots, let them know I need a helper. Oh. There we go. Sun rises again after glow, hurtling a new year. It's your 16th birthday. You awake in the new quarters, blinking into the watery sunlight. Dust motes float through the air, and you take a moment to enjoy the perfection of your bed while you listen to the sounds of the colony waking outside. 
So much has happened in one year. Just a few short months ago, you thought your life was over, and now it's better than ever. There's plenty of food in the colony safe. You even have your own bedroom. You uh, consider snoozing until the day your dad wakes up when you arrive is interrupted by... Reverie is interrupted by someone sitting on your balcony. Hey, it's Dis. He's on your balcony? How'd he get up here? Hey, you're finally awake, Dis says, slipping off the rail. I thought you were going to sleep away your whole birthday. Happy birthday, by the way. You watch the sunrise, comp uh, companable silence. Your dad wakes up shortly after that. <laughs> Dis said happy birthday to us. We're actually best friends now. Your dad wakes up shortly after that, and you order up your traditional birthday breakfast feast. He gives you a big squeeze hug and tells you he's proud of you. Me and Dis are best friends. Best friends, we're the bestest of friends, hell yeah. Okay, well, let's stand right here and end this episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed this extra long episode. I will see you guys next time. You have the most wonderful day. Bye-bye.